Want to hire full-time staff in Hong Kong or looking into the process? Then episode 75, Global from Asia, is perfect for you. Welcome to the Global from Asia podcast, where the daunting process of running an international business from Hong Kong is broken down into straight up actionable advice. And now your host, Michael Michelini. Hope everybody's having an amazing Tuesday morning if you're on the Hong Kong side of the world and happy Monday evening if you're over on the other side in America. And those in Europe, when this goes online, it'll probably be sleeping as it's going to be two or three o'clock in the morning. So depending on where you are, I hope you're having a great day. This is episode number 75. That means we're 75% of the way to hitting 100 episodes. And man, I can't believe how quickly this is gone. It's uh, It's been a fun ride. And you know, every so often I do check the download stats and we have about 2,000 regular listeners. And sometimes depending on the show topic, we hit 6,000 downloads when they're released. I think maybe just some of the topics are, are more interesting than others. But, um, you know, thanks for being one of them. And you know, I'm not trying to call you a stat here, but I have got a lot to to know a lot of you uh, face-to-face and, and on email, and it's been a lot of fun and to get to learn new things and meet new people, just like today's episode. Uh, I've never had the chance to hire anybody full-time in Hong Kong, legally, that is, but uh, today we're going to learn how with Fionn Sen. She's back on the show, as you might have heard. She's been on a few of our, our shows here, and today she's going to be giving us some insights on hiring full-time staff in Hong Kong, dealing with payroll and the HMPF and other details. So it's going to be some stuff I'm learning myself. And as many of you probably know, I am an official affiliate of Bridges Executive Center, which means that if you do use their services and you mention GFA, which stands for Global from Asia, then I'll get a commission So we uh, don't have any fancy tracking codes like other podcasts and high tech stuff. So it's kind of just got to verbally or tell them an email. And I know many of you actually have emailed me to make sure that I get the commission, which means a lot to me. I do appreciate that. Uh, And the prices are the same, whether you you say um, you're using my affiliate program or not. And also there's a a thousand Hong Kong dollar discount when you're opening a new company, either Hong Kong Limited or a offshore BVI or Seashell company, if you do decide to go with them. And it's at globalformasia.com slash bridges or bridges.hk. Okay, and now let's get Fiona on the show. She's going to be talking again about the payrolls and taxes. And after the interview, I'm going to be talking about some fun facts and some reasons maybe you might need to hire full-time staff in Hong Kong, even though you might not uh, think so. So stay tuned after the interview. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another Global from Asia podcast here in central Hong Kong in the Central Tower with Fionn from Bridges Executive Center. Thank you for being here, Fionn. Hi, I'm Fionn again. We are from Bridges Executive Center. We are helping the people to maintain their company, set up the company, and also help them for uh, just like the payroll arrangement service as well. And that's our topic today is hiring and staff and pay, dealing with payroll in Hong Kong. So, you know, I think it's always kind of a little bit complex in every country. What, what are your general feedback you hear from some of your clients in Hong Kong? I think for the payroll arrangement, I think from my client told me that it may not be too complicated in Hong Kong. But when you want to employ somebody and then you need to start to arrange for the payroll, I think a few things you need to be aware will be to set up the MPF which is a kind of a retirement scheme, and also how to calculate for the salary, and also how to report all those data to the Inland Revenue Department, and also whether you have fulfilled the requirement to buy the uh, required compulsory insurance as well. Yeah, we'll cover the, as best we can in today's episode. So any company in Hong Kong can employ staff? Yeah, I think all the Hong Kong company here, they can employ the staff. No matter is employ the local Hong Kong people or employ the expatriate. Of course, when you employ the expatriate, you need to make sure that they have the working visa here. But when you employ the local Hong Kong people, make sure that you look at their Hong Kong resident card. Because I find that a lot of my expatriate, when they employ somebody, they didn't aware that they need to look at their Hong Kong resident card. Make sure that it's much better that they have the Hong Kong permanent residence card, not just Hong Kong resident card. If they have only they only have the Hong Kong resident card, you need to make sure that they have the working permit allow them to work for your firm. Good point for sure. So just wanted to also clarify, if they're the Hong Kong 
offshore company, which we've talked about in previous shows, that mm. they shouldn't be able to hire because they they they're not in Hong Kong, right? So that one. Yeah, if you are planning, if you 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 think that your whole business is the offshore business, supposing you should not employ any staff in Hong Kong. If you employ staff to help you to operate in Hong Kong, then I think your business is not belongs to the offshore company. So but one thing I think I want to talk about in here is I found that some of the, my uh, client is a Hong Kong limited company. They will employ somebody to help them to work in overseas, to work in overseas. That may be something good because um, may which show that their whole operation is not in Hong Kong, just like maybe they employ somebody to help them to do the consultation work in Thailand. So actually, which is one of the very good proof that, that their whole operation is in Thailand, not in Hong Kong, because their staff is in Thailand. You can get yeah, aware on that. Interesting. That's uh, new for me. So then they can hire somebody in Thailand with a Hong Kong limited company? Yeah, because sometimes I find that my client just like, um, for example, I have some expatriate client, they are living in Hong Kong, they set up their business. And then finally, when they do the offshore claim, they said that actually my my whole operation is not involved in Hong Kong, but in the revenue departments will ask them that, but you are leaving here. How you run the business is offshore. But finally, I find that my client, actually, they have employed somebody to help them to run the whole business in Thailand. They are just the owner of the business, but their whole operation is managed by their uh, subcontractor or their staff in other country, which is a very good proof for their whole operation, offshore operation. Clear. And taxes, we all like talking about taxes like what's some kind of like tax salary tax mm. in Hong Kong? So if your staff is helping you to running your business, they are underemployed and work in Hong Kong, they need to pay for the Hong Kong salary tax unless they they are underemployed by Hong Kong company but they are not working in Hong Kong. They may have chance to even for the staff they can, may have chance to have the offshore salary tax claim as well. But if they are working in Hong Kong, they need to pay for the Hong Kong tax and they need to bear for the personal tax. I think in Hong Kong it's very common that the staff pay for their own personal tests, which will not be responsible by the company. And for the personal tests, um, there is the, we call it the progressive rates. So it depends on your salary range. If you earn quite a lot of money, then you will come to the standard rates. Standard rates is 16%. But for the progressive rates is from 2%, 7%, 12% to up to the maximum is 17%. Almost the same as the company tax at 16.5%. Mm, around that. About that. And so now the other other kind of costs, and this is annu- monthly or annually? Yeah, I think as the employer, you need to consider beside your fixed salary paid to your staff, you need to bear some costs if you employ somebody. You need to pay for the annual cost for the insurance because there is the Hong Kong government compulsory you need to buy for the employee compensation, which is a kind of insurance for, for your staff, which is the annual fees is around maybe around $2,000 or $3,000 per per year, Hong Kong dollars per year, which depends on their position and, and also whether they are uh, outdoor staff or indoor staff as well. Okay. Another cost you need to bear in mind is called the MPF. MPF is a kind of retirement scheme that um, the employer and the employee need to contribute. Both parties need to contribute. It's around 5% of their salary. Yeah, so this is the monthly cost. So I think the the cost is MPF and also the employee compensation is the compulsory. Other than that will be the optional. Yeah, because in Hong Kong, there's great health, public health care is mm-hmm. if you're a, a, a registered local Hong Kong resident, if you have a resident, you can get insurance at the hospitals. Mm. Right, as so the company wouldn't have to pay for the public hospital. Yeah, yeah, public hospital. They just one hundred dollar. They can go to the public hospital. But I would say, in order to keep your staff, there is a lot of company will provide better benefits to the employee other than the mandatory one. I think it's very common that most of the company in Hong Kong they will pay. They 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 will uh, provide the outpatients, uh, go to the clinic, that kind of insurance, and also the hospital insurance as well. Yeah, that's great. But that is the optional mm. yeah so if you if you want to attract quality quality staff mm. it, it better to um, to offer that and then you know a lot of people always ask about customs you know we have all these international business people with different cultures in europe in the u.s and around the world so firing and quitting is there a standards for that or mm. 
actually within the we call it the probation period. So within the probation period, uh, which is very common that、um, most of the people when when you engage with the staff, you need to sign up the employment agreement. Make sure that all the terms con- and condition is fixed there. Normally, for the probation period within the first month is one day notice, and then the second and the third month is around seven day notice. After that, after the probation period, normally is one month notice. So either you give them the one month notice period, or you have the one month payment in new to the staff, which is quite common. Yeah, for both party. And also, the staff wants to quit. They they should follow the same. Yeah, follow the same. They they need to give you one month notice if after the probation period. And then for this employee contract, is it like a standard government form template, or is it something they got a company makes themselves with like a lawyer?、Or? For the employment. Contract. You can even find from the internet, from the government department, there is a templates in there. But I found that that templates is for the labor group. Yeah, you know, normally for those people, maybe they are doing restaurant or cosmetic. Those labor group. But if you employ those people for the office work, which may not be very appropriate, so I think mean, it's much better to ask the lawyer to help you to drop one standard one for your company to use. And、uh, in Hong Kong, English only, or like should it be in? Chinese too, or or language. I guess it depend depends on whatever they sign. I find that in Hong Kong, most of the people will use the English contract. I think it's more fair if you employ somebody to work for you. I think they need to know English to communicate with you, right? So I think English contract is most common. But yeah, of course there is still some people they work for the Chinese、uh, boss and may use the Chinese contract as well. Got it.、Mm. Got it. So that's good to know. I think people like to, especially West, foreigners, Westerners like to use English because that's more comfortable for them.、Mm-hmm. And then the holiday schedule. I mean, Hong Kong is very, you know. Global, global place. So there's China nearby and and Western, you know, influence. So what what schedules do workers follow? Actually, in Hong Kong, there is quite common to have two types of holiday. One is called the labor holiday. Another one is called the bank holidays. There is quite difference. So、um, normally for the labor group, they will follow the labor holiday. For those office work, they will follow the bank holidays. But if there is some arguments、um, going to the final. Which will follow the Hong Kong law. The Hong Kong law is according to the labor holiday. But when you employ somebody, you need to fix whether you grant your staff labor holiday or the bank holiday. You need to stay in your employment contract as well. And then, like I know, like Chinese New Year in mainland China is closed for like almost two or three weeks. But in Hong Kong, it's it's, it's like it's only three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for the for the for the Christmas and also for the Chinese New Year, yeah, it's not so long as China.、Hmm. Yeah. So just interesting to to notice that, and bonuses. I think a lot of bosses are always nervous. What's a, a good amount to pay the staff for their, you know, Christmas bonus or New Year's bonus? What is there any suggestions or ranges? I think there is no compulsory for the bonus. Okay, the the bonus is quite discretionary. It depends on the economy, the company situation, and also the the staff performance as well. But I think in Hong Kong, it's quite common that most of the company may offer a、uh, one month bonus to the to the staff. So which means that for the annually, they got thirty months salary, but. It's really quite depend. Some of the Europe European country, I know that they may give two months bonus or three months bonus, which is their style, yeah, their 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 culture. But I think in Hong Kong, most common is around in average is around one month time. And I know this one's hard to answer, but I know it's probably you probably get this question too. What's the normal salary? I guess it also depends on what kind of worker. But I guess people are listeners are probably talking about. Admin, co- college educated, like a, a secretary or s- in business assistant.、Mm, do you have some suggestions or where, or maybe where they can look to get some ideas? Actually, I think for the salary range in Hong Kong is quite a reasonable one. Of course, I think may have chance a bit higher than some of the Southeast Asia country, but I think maybe a little bit lower than. European country, so、um, no worry. I find that for these two years, there is a lots of very good website in the internet. There is those、um, famous recruitment website in Hong Kong. They have this kind of salary range informations for you. You can simply fill in、um, what kind of position that you look for,、uh, how many years of working experience that you require. Then they will have the statistics going up for you. There is a lots of this kind of website in the internet. We can we can probably link some in the notes. People can. Can check it out, and、uh, yeah, it's always changing. It's always about the market, 
market conditions. And so any last tips for uh, bosses or employers looking to hire here? I think, yeah, the good thing is, yes, first go to the um, some salary range website to look at it and then to see whether you are really need to have someone to to join you because I think this is quite a long-term commitment yeah, to employ a staff. So you need to make decision whether you want to employ a permanent staff, part-time staff or the contract staff. But I think because um, our topic now is talking about the payroll, I just want to remind the audience that no matter it's full time part-time staff, you still need to pay for the MPF because there's a lot of people are t- telling me that they are the part-time staff. I do not need to pay for the MPF. That's not true. Even for the part-time staff, you need to pay for the MPF from the employer point of view. But if their salary is quite low, maybe your staff do not need to contribute for the MPF, but as the employer, you need to pay for that. And then another thing I found that most of the um, people may miss is if you have the subcontractor to help you, those subcontractor are the individual. You still need to report to the Inland Revenue Department. You still need to fill in the employer's return to tell them that how much salary you granted to them. So be reminded about that. Yeah, that's really a good one. And so, of course, your company, Bridges, can help help them. And you've been on previous shows, but for those that, that don't know, how, how can they reach out to you? Yep, you can reach out to me. I'm Fionn from Bridges Executive Center. Or you can email me, Fionn, F-I-O-N underscore S-E-N, Sen, my last name is Sen, at bridges.hk. Bridges is B-R-I-D-G-E-S dot H-K. Okay, great. And we'll put that in the notes. So mm-hmm. thank you again for being on the show and sharing. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Fionn, for coming on again. And yeah, also, don't forget everybody to, to consider their services for anything in Hong Kong, whether it be opening companies or maintaining or, or hiring and other services. Uh, let them know. And also, don't forget that I am an affiliate. So uh, thank you for considering them and uh, remembering me. Okay. And now I did say I would talk some tips. So maybe hiring local staff, you might be maybe hiring everybody freelancers or, or in other countries, you know. And maybe not really sure why you would need to do full-time staff in Hong Kong. Previous shows, we talked about investment visas in uh, Hong Kong and getting approved. So a lot of times, any any government would like it if you hire their local people. That means you're you know improving the economy, getting job local jobs for the for the uh, for people there. So. By hiring full-time Hong Kong staff or at least having it in your business plan when you're applying for an investment visa and trying to, to stay long-term in Hong Kong, it's definitely a perk to have that. They'll definitely be interested and favor your application. So definitely keep that in mind. And also I'm just overall ecstatic that people are reaching out to me with different solutions and suggestions from different episodes and people coming to me with uh, news and, and about Hong Kong and China business minutes and hours after it breaks online. I'm getting highlights and I'm putting it all together and I'm giving these people shout outs in the weekly newsletter. So you can check that out and don't and and get on it at globalformasia.com slash subscribe. Also I'm about 95% done with the video training course for the Hong Kong Supercharged program. It's got its own domain and it's in beta, kind of like alpha right now, kind of just getting some some minor adjustments with a small, small, small select group of people. And then we're going to go into the email uh, announcement about it with a special lifetime offer that will probably only be active for less than a week after the email is sent out. So if you want to keep up to date with these offers, it's only going to be to the newsletter subscribers, so make sure you subscribe there. And now for some five-star review we have from Michael Eagleton at FABAPC, which is his venture he's been really working hard on. And then and, and actually I'm in a WeChat group with him and he's been getting people excited about it. So he, before I talk about that, he's also based in Shenzhen. And there was an article just sent to me from the South China Morning Post about Shenzhen being named a top five startup hub and that Hong Kong wasn't anywhere on the list. So it is true. I mean, a lot of people, even I, you know, I don't really even say I'm in Shenzhen. A lot of times people know me or think of me in Hong Kong. But, you know, Shenzhen is getting more and more influential at being a hardware center of the world. And I think more and more people will get to know this city and uh, it's, you know, people like Michael Eagleton and I and others are, are here too. So, you know, keep that on your radar. So let's read it. It's a long review. 
So uh, I'm really amazed at, at his support. He also supported the book and, and other things. So thanks, Michael, for, for being for being so great and supporting. So five-star review, uh, subject, simply the best resource and insights for entrepreneurs starting out in Asia. And he says, for over a year now, I've been listening to the podcast and simply the best for insights on how to start up and run your business from Asia. Michael's guests are all experts and hands-on experienced entrepreneurs who share their experiences and advice. This has been an invaluable treasure trove of what to do and what not to do when starting up business in Asia. For me, as I went about starting my own business in China, I've been able to save time, money, and follow the lead from so many successful people that have done it all before. I highly recommend this podcast if you are about to start up in Asia or, or like me, always wanted to start up but were afraid to. Even after being in China for almost 18 years, I've learned and benefited so much from Michael's ability to share advice and bring together such a broad range of experts for so many different fields. Keep up the good work, Michael, and thank you. Oh, thanks, Michael. And that's F-A-B-A-P-C. And I really support your venture. and I'm, I'm glad that this podcast had uh, had helped you get this going. So definitely just keep going. That's, that's just like this show. I mean, I, at the beginning, I was really afraid to put my voice online and to put stuff out there. And, you know, it's been, it's been a lot of, a lot of fun. So thanks, thanks for uh, being part of it. And thank you everybody um, for having me here with you and your earbuds. And I was wondering last week, I mentioned my bike accident. I got some people reaching out to me uh, nervous. It was not that big a deal, but uh, I'm still biking regularly and uh, not letting that get me down, you know, just like anything in life, you know, we, we fall down sometimes, but we just got to get back up. Just like my kid, Miles, he's starting to walk now, just past eight, nine months, and it's pretty amazing to watch him fall and get back up, and he's got a helmet too. So I, I have a helmet for my bike riding, and I'll, I'll throw a picture up at the bottom of the show notes uh, with my yellow bright helmet and uh, globalformasia.com slash episode 75. Okay, enough of this blah, blah, blah. I'm out of here. I'm going to go for a bike ride, all right? Peace. To get more info about running an international business via Hong Kong, please visit our website at www.globalfromasia.com. That's www.globalfromasia.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our iTunes feed. Thanks for tuning in.